After two years of revisiting one of my most beloved games from my childhood, I think it is time that I remake the gem that became the centerpiece for my channel. The Simpsons Hit and Run was a game that is considered one of the best licensed games, even though it was basically copies the GTA formula, but it was knotted down to be more age appropriate. With many factors that made this game enjoyable and memorable, there came a number of levels and tasks that did nothing more than annoy, irritate, and just simply enrage us. And today, I wanted to revisit those very missions. This is going to be the top 10 hardest missions in The Simpsons Hit and Run. A quick note I want to throw in there is that this time, all missions are fair game. Bonus missions, regular missions. So, let's get right into it. Number 10, we have Redneck Roundup. Kicking off this list is a Cletus mission in level 4 where Marge tries to talk to Cletus. However, he gets very paranoid thinking she had other intentions and then just drives off. The mission involves you following Cletus while picking up the items he drops, but at the same time you have to avoid losing track of him or else you will fail the mission. Now, if you're familiar with my top 10s, you know how much I despise that green bar of doom. It usually means that the driver you're following is going to be reckless and is pretty much ready to give you a hard time. Cletus is a super reckless driver who somehow gains extra speed and purposefully drops the items in terrible locations that can cause you to crash, easily leading you to losing him and having to repeat the mission. Any minor crashes or setbacks can keep you away from Cletus and it can lead to a little frustration. If your driving ability and map knowledge is quite low, there is a good chance that you will have quite the struggle with this one. Number 9, we have Kang and Kodo Strike Back. This is actually the final mission in level 6 and although it, is, it has a very easy concept, the execution itself can be a bit more tricky. You have to race Kang and Kodos to the brewery and you get to use Homer's 70 sports car which is one of the fastest cars in the game. However, the aliens are very difficult to beat because their car can easily surpass yours basically making it mandatory for you to use all the available shortcuts at your disposal. You have to be very careful though because getting caught up in any of those shortcuts can cause you to lose the race and sometimes you feel like you will taste sweet victory and the aliens swoop right past you. It gets irritating after a couple of tries, however it does get a bit easier once you learn the map and all the shortcuts. Not to mention that you can easily defeat them by driving the opposite way, but let's just pretend racing them directly is the only way to do it. Number 8, Fishy Deals. Oh great, a Lisa mission. I'm not exactly sure how many of you will agree with me on this one being difficult, but I have to acknowledge it because this one gave me legitimate anger. All you have to do is set the fish free from being taken to the restaurant to run the squid port. There's about 22 of them, and that's it. Easy, right? Well... Ah! Oh! Oh! The card is screw me over! Oh! I don't know if this mission is supposed to be easy, but the first few times I played this, I had such a hard time getting through all those people by the ship without causing a hit and run, and the fact that many of the fish were on the opposite side of the road from where we were supposed to be driving made it that much more irritating because you would inevitably crash into a few cars, and that can make you waste time. After filling the mission a number of times, I remember having to hear those annoying quotes from Lisa repeatedly and it made it so much harder for me to concentrate and I just couldn't focus and I was losing my mind and now I can't concentrate on this video! But at the end of the day, it is beatable but my god, I do I have terrible memories with this mission the first time I played it. Once again, I freaking hate you Lisa. Number 7, This Old Shanty. Yes, you can all stop requesting this one. This is actually a bonus mission from level 1, and as we all know, level 1 is not meant to be difficult, however, this mission kicked it up a notch and of course it has to involve Cletus. You have to collect a certain amount of cardboard tubes, and collect the tobacco harvest, whatever that is, and bring it back to him in under 2.5 minutes. This is the first time that we see one set timer for the entire mission, so you have to be very careful with how you go about this. Collecting the cardboard isn't the most difficult task, however, once you get to the tobacco fields, you can use your card to collect all of them, but that will cause you to knock the plants which will count as property damage, leading to your crime bar to get to the hit and run point. Now you have cops chasing after you. Or you can simply exit the vehicle and run to collect the harvest, but that method is time consuming which can make the mission difficult as well. You have to decide how you want to balance your time, and sometimes you can miscalculate causing you to fail. This bonus mission is a matter of choice. Considering this is in the first level, I have to give it props for cranking up the difficulty so early in the game. And it just seems to be one of those that many had trouble with. So once again Cletus, you make the list. Number 6, Monkey See, Monkey Don't! Sometimes I feel like I make these missions harder on myself. This mission in level 2 requires you to take the Mr. Plow from Homer and collect the 30 monkeys scattered around the area to take back to Dr. Nick. This is where we all realize that we should have explored the map more than we did. This is the only time where that helpful hint actually meant something. 
I was never able to remember in what directions to go or what buildings I had to climb. And every time I retried the mission after failing, I kept making the same mistakes. You have to know the map very well or else you will simply have trouble with this mission because they are spread out on such a wide amount of area and as a first time player it is easy to get lost and confused. All of that while listening to that music that played in the background that made this mission that much more memorable. But at the same time, I thought it was teasing me. Again, it was about managing your time but for some reason I was unable to pull it off on numerous occasions and for those reasons altogether, it finally makes its way onto my list. Hitting and running into number 5, it is Quick Cash. After 2 years of re-exploring this game, I can finally say a lot more about this mission than I originally did. In level 5 you play as Apu who spends a good amount of time interacting with Snake and in this mission you have to drive his bandit car which is very awesome but once you get that objective telling you to destroy an armored car, everything turns upside down. You're required to destroy the armored car using the bandit but as many of us know that car is more meant for racing and it is not meant for destroying and trying to put any damage on that armored car is a major pain and will cause you to lose your patience eventually. If you hit the car enough your car will eventually explode and that is an automatic failure of the mission. So it is crucial that you look for wrenches as much as possible. Keep in mind that there is no time limit for this mission but the fact is that this task will eventually test your patience and become frustrating after a while. A fun little piece of trivia for all of you to know is that this mission was originally intended to have a 3 minute time limit. Like what? That would just be too much for me and other gamers alike to handle. The fact is, this mission can still be frustrating even without a time limit and that just makes it worthy of having a spot on this list. Number 4, Wolf Stole My Pills. Another mission from level 4 makes its way onto the list. In her quest to find out why Bart was behaving so strangely, Marge goes to grandpa for clues, however he is freaking out because the bully stole his medications. After talking to Nelson, we find out that a black car has them and now we have to follow it along with that dreaded green bar of doom. Oh great, now we know what's coming. The car drops the meds at very random times and the way it drives is a total swerve fest. It makes many weird turns and even a u-turn at some point and sometimes it will drop off the items in one of those said sharp turns. If you spend too much time trying to grab those or get stuck at some point, you are very likely to lose the car. Very similar to Redneck Roundup but a bit more difficult. Another thing that I really hated about this is how the car would leave the medications in the worst locations possible, sometimes forcing you to run into objects like other vehicles or even trees. All this wreckage, why don't the cops chase after him? Look at look, look where he put it! I would have flopped somewhere. Look, look where he puts it! Right in front of a tree, in front of a car. Oh. After you go through all that, the mission does get a lot easier, but the task before can be very tricky if you are not careful. Number 3. Never trust a snake. At this point, it's going to be nothing but nostalgia, but for all the wrong reasons. In this mission in level 5, we continue Apu's interactions with Snake, and this time we have to help Snake by collecting garbage and making it back before a set time. What exactly makes this difficult? Well, this is another mission where we get uh, one whole timer before we fail. So once again, you must manage and balance your time. The first part is not difficult. Just collect the trash that comes out of the truck and that will eventually lead you near the go-go plex. And now you have to collect the remaining trash. What made many people rage over this mission is how it becomes a mixture of driving your car, jumping on buildings, and knowing your way around the map. Very similar to Monkey See, Monkey Do. But the buildings were a lot higher so falling or mistiming your jumps was a major time waster and made this task a lot more of a hassle to deal with. I can already hear the screams of many children and adults every time you accidentally fell off the buildings. If you were still unfamiliar with the map, then this mission will be that much harder. After collecting all the trash, hooray you're done, but no! You had to drive back to the DMV with the same timer you started with. So if you did all that hard work but were not aware of the time, then sorry, you'll have to try again. If you have to repeat this mission numerous times, it becomes very annoying and will kill your patience because this is a very lengthy mission. I remember throwing tantrums because I was so annoyed by having to start all over. So be careful, this one can mess you up. Number 2. It is time. Alien Autopsy Part 3. The memories, the torture, the horrible car controls. <laughs> Why? Alien Autopsy Part 3 is the final mission in the entire game and rightfully so. The mission seems very simple but is extremely difficult and the worst part is that it's not always our fault. The car we were given has some of the worst balance that I have ever seen so you cannot drive recklessly or else this mission becomes a total pain. The first part is pretty average with the race against the alien car, however once you win the race you have to pick up the toxic waste and it's all chaos, anger and tears from there. You only have one minute to drive from the power plant to the school and you have to do that without crashing into anything or else you will destroy the toxic waste 
and will be forced to get the toxic waste back from the power plant in one minute. If you think a breakup with your girlfriend or boyfriend is bad, try bringing the toxic waste all the way to the school just to have yourself crash right before you get it into the tractor beam and now you have to drive back to the power plant. Or how about the fact that the timer will still run even though you get into the tractor beam on time. So yes, you can fail the mission for something that is completely out of your control. It's so freaking heartbreaking. The number of factors that can cause you to lose the toxic waste or just fail overall are countless and so frustrating to the point that players actually never completed the game because of this mission. People actually mention how they don't even know how the game ended because they rage quitted on this one. Alien Autopsy Part 3 purposefully screws with you with the terrible ride, crashes, and slow tractor beams. This mission traumatized many and will remain in all of our memories as one of the hardest missions in the entire game. And coming in at number one, we have the Cola Wars. <laughs> I am totally just kidding. You guys, it's not that hard. Stop telling me about it. Number one, Set to Kill. Oh god, someone please help me right now. Set to Kill is a mission that everyone remembers. This one legitimately messed me up as a kid. This comes on level 6 and Bart finds himself having to destroy the laser stands using the Globex villain car. The task is to destroy all the laser stands and get back to Krusty Lewis Studios before time runs out. Now let's name a number of issues that are wrong with this. The Globex villain car looks amazing, but I will always hate it because it was so wide and it would always get caught up in tight spaces, already turning into a time waster. And there is just way too many people near the ship thinking, oh, this guy's trying to complete a mission? Let's all get in the way and make the cops chase after him so he can't complete the task and everything will be dandy. Getting a hit and run is almost certain and the cops will make this mission hell for you. No, you're not the Oh no, okay. Standing in the way, right in front of me. And that lamppost standing there too? Oh, fuck it. Fuck it. I don't regret anything either. No! Get out! No! No! You guys are jerks, man. They destroyed my car! You gotta be kidding me. The laser stands are placed in some of the worst possible spots that leave plenty of room for crashes that can easily destroy the car leading to an automatic fail. Once you destroy the laser stands, oh great, the mission's over, right? No. Now you have to drive back to Krusty Loose Studios in a short amount of time and the same factors come back into play. You can be inches away from reaching that finishing point and the time will just go against you. The mission infuriated me as a kid and made me want to destroy my controller. I was legitimately going insane over this. Even today I still continue to struggle with this one. And I understand that there are some glitches that may assist you, but playing the mission the way it's meant to be played is an experience that messes up your patience and mentality. Be ready if you're ever going to attempt this mission. It's going to be a ride. But thank you guys very much for watching this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you agreed or disagreed, let me know in the comments below. And stay tuned for future videos and future gaming content. Hopefully you guys will have a great day. And I will be seeing you guys in the very next one. Bye-bye.